fill the cigarettes. Yep. The fill the fill the, the fill the, 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 the cigarettes. Yeah. Well, the white film, I guess what it was made of. Asbestos. That's right. Good stuff. Ten cigarettes, they were. So where was this asbestos plant again? New Farm. Yeah, that was a new farm, yeah. Yeah, right, big building down near the river. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and it was dripping from the ceilings, like moss. Like moss? Yeah. Like, like, like cascading. It was, it was, yeah, it was lovely. Like stalactites. Yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and it was asbestos. Asbestos. No one gave us stuff. And the workers used to all go from there and over to a pub. No one, no one gave us stuff about it. Is that the same pub where we saw Buddy Guy? It is the same pub. Same saw. pub we saw Buddy Guy. Same pub we saw Buddy Guy. Yeah. Buddy Guy was in the, in the back part. The back part of it. Yeah. I remember it. I remember it that night. And we were doing a job over the north side, further over the north, where they did really nice pies on the bottom of the dip there, and it was an asbestos roof. And they had... That's amazing. The old Super Buddy Six. Guy, that, that's exactly the hotel. That's the pub. That's the pub. So I remember it. It was like 83, 84. You walked across the road and just up 100 yards. Yes, yeah, it was like 984 and we had to go and get a bloody, go and get the rich caps. Yeah. Asbestos rich caps. I actually cut one. Yeah, it's sort of like, oh, I cut it. Yeah. I cut it out the back in the, in the back of the car, yeah. yeah. Because we never had, we wouldn't have our asbestos cut it. We'd yeah, we just cut it. Yeah, we just hoard it. I saw it. Yeah, right, yeah. And I hard getting the screws out because they weren't Phillips, so the old normal screws with a big yeah. diamond shaped sort of um, washer. Yeah. Asbestos. The good old days. Yeah, we're alive. We didn't live. Top little business under the cage. Yeah. It's the best little business going. Yeah, well, the back's hurt. There's bugging your back. That's, that's no good at all. No, no. What you got to do is you got to give it up, mate. No, no. The situation at the border is an emergency while also claiming a crisis that started before he came into office. There's an old adage. Now, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. There's an old adage in, 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 in wealth and that. It's, it's not the money you make, it's the money you spend. Yeah. If, 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 if you become wealthy not through making money but from spending too much money. Now, is it the fact have more than you need yeah that you actually spend it too much or not not really I don't spend much at all I don't smoke I don't drink I don't gamble I don't have flash clothes when I buy a car I always sell it for more than I pay for it so I make money on them that's right and I'm supporting everyone else that's all well, that, that, that's not a stop no no I, I was talking to Beverly the other, uh, other week and I couldn't believe when she told me that not one of you, not one of them boys are earning a dollar. Not one. And I said, bullshit. And they said, no. She said, I said, what about, what about champion? I said, he's like a, he, he, he hasn't worked for a year. And she said, the day will take him back. Yeah, but he won't go. Well, he will fucking have to go. Go down and tell him. Try and tell him. They're all down in there bludgeoned now to him and Tristan down there. Pissed up and smoking and fighting. Are they on the dole even? No, not even that. They haven't put a form in here. When he stopped work, he had 10 grand. Now he's got 200 bucks. And I just put 450 bucks worth of bloody uh, stereo and reversing camera in his car for him. No. Oh. Don't worry about it. So what was his first school you went to again? Your first school was at where? Townsville. No. Uh, St. Mary's. No, Mary's the, the auntie that took care of you. The only school that was of any value to me was Gilgandra. But what was your first school? Uh, I mean, I Alma Den, bloody Cairns, and, and all sorts of bloody places. But where was the school where you stayed at your aunties when you were a kid? Uh, 
in Townsville, wasn't it? Or was it Cairns? And then you were shipped on a train to Melbourne. Yeah. And it was your Auntie Mary that took you. Your dad's younger sister. Yes. And, 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 but then, no, they, she stayed. I went with my grandma. Oh, okay. And we were with Auntie Ruth. Okay. And she, what they had us on, they had me on, had us on what it was called. Education by, uh, by uh, at home. Yeah. Because we've all been shipped around that much. Because of the war. Trapped through the war. And anyone they could take, the kids were just taken off their families and, and fostered out. And if you can foster out your grandparents, that's wonderful. So you literally turned five in 1939. Yeah, because... Because you think of it, Raymond, every able bodied man in Australia was they were put in the army. Yeah. There were no fathers. No. There were no fathers. That's why I've been so different to other fathers and other Australians. Because I'm totally different the idea of upbringing and everything to, to what it is. And, and I was lucky that I had grandparents that were able. And they were they were conscripted into the manpower. Yes. Yeah. And and my grandmother was contracted to educate us, which she did. And if she never, she would have been put in a bloody factory. Can you understand? And that? your grandfather was what working on farms. And my, no, no, my father was. Working. No, your grandfather. My grandfather was working building bridges and, and building bloody. Uh, airport, air, air, air strips. Air strips. And your father was fighting for the Americans. Yeah, he was, he was in the American army. In the American army. Yeah. Provision. Because uh, he was, he had a shop in Townsville. In Townsville. And they just took his job over. They just said, there's our shop there. Yeah. All this ice cream and all this shit you're getting, and you know, you, your job is now getting a plus. Yeah. And he would go, he'd go everywhere looking for food and stuff. And uh, he'd be in it. go conscripted from hotels and fucking guns and living. Live. People, they, I wonder why no one's ever written books or told us about all the things that happened in the war. Yeah. Right. See, our little country had to just live all by itself. It yeah, was we were, isolated, huh? We were totally deserted by the bloody British. Yeah. Uh, the ones we loved of our, our Britain, all our soldiers were all... They weren't over here for Japan, they were all over in fucking Europe. They were injured about Dunkirk when I was 27 miles away. Got all our soldiers were over there. Ours were 5,000, 10,000 miles away, 11,000 miles away. Right, yeah, Ours were stuck in Europe. Yeah. And in Singapore. Yeah. And then meanwhile, the Japanese are coming down to kill us. That's right. They weren't just across the ways where you could see them, they could swim home. You know, they were, they were literally bloody the other side of the world. And we were left all alone and isolated. And this is, I, mean, I never re- realised it all, but every year, if the game, if the, if the go was okay, they'd let you go home to your parents. Or if there was a, like, there, there could be a break for the soldiers and let some soldiers would come home and spend two weeks or at home with their wife and, and family if they were close by. Like if you're in New Guinea, you go home to to camp, sort of thing. Yeah. But I don't know how it all worked, but but we end up we end up been able to go up to camp up to Chile or sort of there. Place called Albert Dead and see the grandfather and all that stuff and the family. But we never saw Steve. Steve was he was young. He was he was he was in the in the bloody commandos in, in New Guinea and that's the one of those we didn't never see him again ever. And, and, and uh, we were just told that you, you, you'll never you'll never see him again because. Uh, no one will get out of there. Even if we win the war, we won't get out of there. won't get anybody in there. And it didn't end up like that at all. Yeah. It turned out. 
And you lived at home with your grandpa, so he's your uncle that you're closer to than they're like a normal uncle. Yeah, yeah. Because you're there with him all the time. Yeah. He wasn't like a visiting uncle. He was literally in the house all the time. No, no, no. And what about Yarny Mayor in this business when he went to Melbourne? Did you see troop trains come the other way when you were a little boy? Yeah. Yeah, thousands of troops. And they sent you to Melbourne. American troops, all thousands of them. And they sent you to Melbourne six times. Five times. Five times. What school in Melbourne you got in? Uh, the one that I remember the most was Camberwell Junction. Okay. Camberwell Junction. Camberwell. And we lived in Camberwell. But I went to there because we didn't have to do correspondence there because we were the block of flats we lived in with another with other people. It was a, it was a, an old lady lived in the block of flats, and she had a couple of bedrooms. Yeah. So she was just scripted to put put us up in one bedroom and someone else another one. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, people, uh, it was a bloody war. You know what I mean? Right. We had a, we had a, and if I told you some of the stories, half of that would be true. But of how tough it was to get food. Yeah, but imagine how tough it was for your grandfather living through the Federation drought. Oh. No one even knows about that. The Federation drought was the year of Federation. It went for like three or four years, oh, the greatest drought yeah, this country's yeah, ever had. Yeah, yeah. And they had, what was it, a, a wheat? They had a big wheat farm or something yeah, yeah. down in South Australia. Yeah, right. And where was it again? In, it was in Snowdon. Snowtown. Snowdown. Snowdown. There's no snow, it's not, it's real snow I was high, it was, it was high off the ground, might have got snow once in a million years. I don't think they've ever seen snow. And they landed in what, 1840s, 1820s or something? Yeah. That's insane. You've never seen a better look at blokes in your life than the bloody Richard boys. You had a big strong blokes from back then be 6 foot 2 and 6 foot 3. Back then Richard was 6 foot 6. Richard, That's was, unbelievable. He was a world champion expert. He, he went to America and he was in America, spent his, most of his life in America. Um, it was a big thing, Axman. And that was 1900 or 1901 or something, he did that. Axman were, were, were the heroes. I know. You know, that even when I remember when I first went to boxing, the Sydney Stadium and that. The, at the end of Glimmery, about the, the things that come in on the stage, on the stage behind, yeah. and that's going to come out and cut the bloody trees down. Yeah. There'd be bloody big tips of timber loads flying through. It didn't matter if a bug broke on him, he'd cut on his cheek. Yeah. This is it, 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 you go to the boxing match, and this is what happens to you. Imagine that like now. Yeah. We're all fucking Nancy's. Yeah, no, I used to see him at the exhibition in the 70s and 80s. Hey? I used to see him at the exhibition doing it. Yeah. The old Ecker. Yeah. They used to do that indoor at the boxing. And when the, when the main blend had finished, I would come the, 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 the wood choppers, and then the main of it would come on. Yeah. And they were all men there. Never saw a woman in your life. Uh, and... Uh, Let's check this out. Totally different world altogether. Oh yeah, and you met Willie Pep at the boxing. Yes, he was a referee for Jimmy. Yeah, Johnny Famishon fighting Harada. I met Willie Pep outside the stadium. He's a referee. He refereed the Famishon fight. Sixty-six or something. Yeah. And I went there, and I have got a bunch of tickets. Yeah. A bloke sold me a ticket and it was even a bloke. Photocopy, yeah, or whatever you could do back then to make it. A little, little blue ticket like that. And I paid you the bloody. You know. And he came out and no one knew who it was him. The old referee, the referee was Willie Pett. Yeah. The greatest footwork ever in history of boxing. No one, ever had, no one had footwork like him, the V step. And he just. A little curly headed Italian, ball if he's ball. But he had curly hair. That was Johnny Famishon versus Fighting Harada. Yeah. Didn't he wear weird, weird pants, Fighting Harada? I think he wore funny looking short, baby short pants. Yeah, he's a yeah, good fighter. Japanese, probably the greatest Japanese boxer ever. Yeah, he's a really good fighter. He got stuck in here and never stopped. Yeah. 
and, and it, it was a hell of a fight, hell of a fight. And I'll tell you, not only was, the first preliminary bout was this real good looking Aboriginal, real good looking bloke, flashy way of fighting too. Fought a red headed bloke from, from Melbourne who was, who was a knockout person. And I said, yeah, this red headed bloke will knock this, this other bloke out of Well, he did. The, the Aboriginal bloke knocked him off. <laughs> you never saw blokes hit each other so hard all your life. And guess who that fellow was? Tony Mundine. It was Tony Mundine, the dad, Tony yeah? Mundine, yeah. We saw him fight. Uh, yeah. We saw him fight Jesse Burnett in 1978, Festival Hall, remember? Yeah. And he held his hands over his eyes and they all said it was because of the light in his eyes he wasn't. It was, it was bullshit. He was knocked out. Sometimes you do that. Jesse Burnett, but he had changed his name to a Muslim name. I can't remember what it was. He was a light heavyweight or cruiserweight or something like that. It was for a world title or something like that. It was some yeah, decent title. But the best fight we saw was uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, remember, versus um, not Ernie Atanga, not Doug Sam, what's his bloody name? The one of the two brothers. Um, the, the boat sailing bloody Swede dudes, what are they, what are they? Yeah. Danish. Danish, I know. What were their name? Uh, Jansen. Jansen. Brian Jansen versus Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. That was probably the best fight I've ever seen in the ring. And really fight hard. Uh, yeah, he fought Tank Ropus. Yeah, that, that, that Frank Ropus, yeah. Oh, he was hard. But no, no crimps, no man, real hard, hard those crimps and Ropus. Yeah. And they stand up and, and, and you can batter them to death. I mean, yeah, they're just bored. No, they're genuine bored tough ones. Yeah. You, you wouldn't have anything like that today. They don't even land two or three bucks and they stop the fight. Yeah. How many fights of Roy's did you see, actually, with your eyes, like at the ring? Were you his corner man for his fights? No, no. How many fights of his did you see? Because he had, like, over 100 fights. I saw him in Sydney Stadium about four times. Because your boxer IQ looks like this. No, he wasn't with me. I, I, he was in North Queensland. I was there, and then I was in North Queensland, and he was there. And, but uh, he, he, that was amateurism. And, and but he fought Vic Patrick, didn't he? No, no, no. no. Tommy Burns, no? No, he didn't I don't know, so I wasn't around, so. It was good to see the old fights. He had some hard fights. No, he wasn't a good He was a, he was a, a good average fighter. Like, that, he didn't have a reach. No. He didn't have a reach. Oh, he did when he was younger, but not so much. Mm. No, it's a shame, eh? And yet, of all the ones you know, I'm the only one that's ever been in a ring with a world champ. Of all the people you knew boxing, I sparred Philip Holiday many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Philip Holiday. I was his sparring partner. He was true, fighting true, for the Pan Pacific title. And he was fighting it, I think... Super welterweight or middleweight, he was fighting up right up and out of his division, his original divisional weight. But he was good. He was sharp. Because I sparred, I sparred Doug Sam. Doug Sam was the flashiest. I couldn't hit him, but he couldn't get in on you like like Phil could. Philip was insane. Philip was quick. He'd get in on you. Yeah, he used to bend down low. Yeah, coming like Tyson does. He's, He'd come yeah. in from the side, duck and come from the side and stand south yeah, on it. He'd step to your, to your orthodox side with his right foot lead and, and, and rip you with the left. He would, would have beat bloody uh, uh, that, that flashy knee. Mayweather. Mayweather. Yeah, he never got to fight him. He, he lost his title to Sugar Shane Mosley, but he was actually sick as a dog for that fight. Mo, Mosley was as good a fighter as you can get. I know. And, and Mosley knocked him out. It was the first punch of the fight. I know, yet he got up and kept going, yeah. Yeah, he got up, I thought the fight was over. Yeah. I thought the fight's over, right? Because uh, you can't be hit like that. And, Come and then, back. And he got up and his feet were about six inches off the floor. Yeah. You know, you're stepping and you actually, your feet are all off the floor. Yeah. When you're stunned. And he was stepping in, in the air. In the air. Uh, it's all over. I think. And somehow he pulled himself together. 
and, 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 and there was a second round, and then it, and they had Belmont the shit out of the fucking. Yeah, I well, know they gave him the fight mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he actually beat him. He was a three. Yeah, no, I didn't give it to him though. No. It was in New York. No, he was a three times decathlon champion. Oh, not decathlon. Um, pen, triathlon champion in South Africa. Triathlon. That's bike riding, jogging. He never stopped. He grew up on a in a religious sort of like, not a commune, but a religious sort of thing where they were very Christian and they had a lot of like the, the local Negroes and Africans there and they just, they all lived as one sort of thing. They were very Christian and very open. And his, and his sparring partner was Francois Botha. He used to beat the crap out of Botha who fought, Mike, who lost his title to Mike Tyson. Let me just say this. Just off there ain't anyone around like you and me. I'll tell you, we're, we're totally different people. Mm. We're, we're totally different people. I tell you, this is what I just tell you. I spent my whole life working for myself. Yeah, I know. Just, just doing it all myself. Same. Same with you. I won't work for anyone else. I, I, I didn't know it. I just can't do it. I couldn't do it. I said, I'll get it. No, I'll get I sit under a bridge rather than do it. Yeah. yeah, I can't have someone above me. I won't look up a ladder and see someone above me. No. And I don't mean ladders and roofs. I mean metaphorically. Yeah, no, you can't. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't work. Could you work for? But now I like uh, the president of the United States. Trump. How yeah. long could you work for not for the president of the United States? I. If he can give you a job. You'd call him an arsehole and punch him in the head. You wouldn't, it'd be on, with, you, he wouldn't, it wouldn't last you know, one. Oh, he's, I said off the bat, he's a pig-headed guy, but he's, he's like Drano. Every now and then you've got to run some Drano down the, the pipes to clean out the scum. That's right, that's right. You know, it's like chemotherapy. Yeah. America had cancer and chemotherapy is a hideous thing. It makes yeah. your hair fall out and yeah. almost kills you itself, but you need it every now and then. That's right. He's like John Wayne in the searches. You need to send that dude out to get the, the, to, to sort the Indians out. And bring back the kids, and then, yeah, right, yeah. but you don't let him in the house. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's right. Leave me out on the doorstep. No, no, we'll see how it goes. We, we, we had that, but you've got to, son, you've got to just to clear it off. I'll get there. No, you can't do it with injury because it'll just lead to a worse injury. I know. The treatment can cost upwards of five thousand dollars. I drive. The whole thing is you've got to get them kids have got to go to work, or they they don't eat. Yeah. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. The changes are now being reviewed. Yeah. Smith, Sky News. I know. Tough love. When I look at you, side on. I'm looking at Steve Westwood. Yeah. Uh-huh. A Christian looks like him. Christian looks like him. He's the Christian. He's Christian. He's you, Steve. My father. Uh, 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 all day wrestling. They're all wrestling. And he was a champion fighter. He'll look at Christian, you know. He's got still bars in his legs and from, 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 from gridiron. and. Oh, yeah. Broken back. He goes out, he goes for it flat out. But you, you can't, you can't play it anymore. You can't do that anymore. You've got to get away, mate. Yeah, well. You end up with, 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 you have no life at all. I'll quit. Hey? I'll quit it. You've got to give it away because it's the former Melbourne Demons coach who was diagnosed with the condition... That's Christian's current then, now. Yeah. Yes, the bloody beautiful. Saying the fight against motor neurons disease must continue... That's the better of the one...